All right, in this video, we're gonna talk about penicillin and it's going to be represented by the pencils, pencils for penicillin. And just as a reminder, in our pharmacology videos, our first room is going to be on method of action. Our second room is gonna be on clinical use and our third room is gonna be on adverse effects. So let's begin. So over here in this scene, we have these pencils over here who are having marriage problems and they're going marriage therapy to try to deal with it. Over here is the marriage therapist and here are their kids waiting in the waiting room. So let's begin over here with clinical use, and then we'll come back to mechanism of action. So here we have the couple here waiting for the marriage therapist to walk into the office. And they're each sitting on some interesting cushions over here. She's sitting on this purple cushion over here. Purple for gram positive. This purple cushion is going to remind us of the gram positive organisms, which penicillin is used for. PAP, pneumonia, axonomyces, and pyogenes. And if you want a visual for that, we'll have the gnome for pneumonia, the acting mouse for actinomyces, and the pie for pyogenes. Penicillin is mostly used for gram-positive organisms such as strep pneumonia, strep pyogenes, and actinomyces. He, however, he seems a little bit more angry. What's he standing on? So he's standing on this gram-negative diplococci, because penicillin is also used for ne gram-negative cocci, specifically Neisseria manginitis, which has this diplococci look. The cocci are on top of the spiral to help us remember the spirochetes, which penicillin is used for, mainly treponema pallidum. Now let's go to mechanism of action. So that's taking place in this waiting room over here. The kids are waiting in the waiting room, waiting for their parents to come out. And they're very excited. Let's see why. So first they like the toys that are in this waiting room over here. The doctor likes to provide them with some nice toys. So we have the D-block and the Aladdin, and the D-block and the Aladdin. To help us remember that penicillin is a d ala d ala structural analog. Let's take a look at the news screen up here. PBP News. Sounds like PBS News. Maybe that's a typo? I'm not sure. But the pencil that went through the screen over here, on top of the PBP, reminds us that penicillin binds to PBP. It binds to penicillin binding proteins. And by doing so, it blocks transpeptidase cross-linking of peptidoglycan in the cell wall. And thus, the cell wall cannot form. And here they are in their toy car over here. Or the auto over here. The auto that's licking. This auto here has a tongue. The auto that's licking. And they are activating it. They are getting the lights on. They are activating the autolytic enzymes. Penicillin also activates autolytic enzymes. And that's another method of action that it has. Okay, now let's go to adverse effects. So here we see the therapist himself, and he's getting very frustrated because he has these red blood cell looking things over here with combs on them. These red blood cell things with the combs on them are to help us remember that direct combs positive, well actually they're exploding, because the red blood cells are dying. Hemolytic anemia, that's what hemolytic anemia is. Direct combs positive hemolytic anemia. Penicillin in high doses can induce an immune mediated hemolysis of red blood cells. This occurs through the haptin mechanism in which antibodies are targeted against the combination of penicillin attached to red blood cells. And this leads to complement activation and removal of red blood cells by the spleen. So these combs on these red blood cells are going to help us remember that. But oh no! He's starting to cry! <laughs> That's because he's very sensitive. We'll call him hypersensitive. This reminds us that penicillin can lead to hypersensitivity reactions. Some individuals can even have anaphylactic reactions. And finally, we know that he has his hand on this medicine bottle over here. And for some random reason, there's this nephron over here that's on fire attached to it. This helps us remember a third adverse effect of penicillin, and that's drug-induced interstitial nephritis, inflammation of the nephrons. A final word that we want to make is resistance that some bacteria have developed to pen penicillin. And that's twofold. One are those that produce beta-lactamase, because beta-lactamase cleaves the beta-lactam ring of penicillin. And two are those that have developed mutations in the PBPs, as penicillin won't have the same effect. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this scene on penicillin. Stay tuned for our next scene in pharmacology.